All right, we're recording. Hey folks, welcome to this month's uh, Torch and Wire community meeting. Uh, quick reminder, this does happen on the first of the month, first Monday of the month at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, we have the sort of informal developer hour on the other Mondays in this same uh, time slot. So let's jump right in. Uh, so we actually have a, quite a few uh, interesting things that have happened since the last uh, uh, community meeting. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And then I think at the end we can have some good discussion and, uh, and stuff. Actually, go ahead and interrupt me on any of these slides um, if you have any questions or, or discussion points. Um, yeah, just a reminder, uh, we have a Discord and Discourse. Um, so feel free to uh, communicate there. The Discord is the most active, and we typically get back pretty quickly on that. Um, yeah, so the project has had 69 commits in the last 30 days with some nice um, uh, variation he here where we have quite a few contributors at this point, and so I'm really happy about that. All right, so let's jump right into the technical updates. So maybe the biggest highlight is something that Anoush has put together. Anoush, do you want to do this slide? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do is try and make it really easy. Um, and, and we're getting a lot of customers that are uh, trying our Touch from uh, And we wanted it to be just out of the box, uh, easy to use. And so, uh, the past week, 10 days, I've been trying to get many Linux uh, and Mac OS. And Mac OS, we can do 3.9, 3.10. It's fully uh, uh, parameteric. Uh, the idea being uh, folks can try Tartamalaya without having to build it uh, on any version of Python that you have. And um, so if you look at the uh, getting started readme, it's become very, very simple. You just pip install, and then you can w get a script and run it. Um, and and I, I've actually had customers um, starting to try using the uh, pip install version, and and uh, I, I think it it crosses like the sniff test that uh, um, uh, people have, and then then it's like yeah, the developers will get into the details. But uh, but I think this uh, it, please do provide any feedback. Uh, we want to spend some time trying to make it really easy. Uh, obviously, the op support and model support we're continuing to work on. But the flow for anyone coming into Touch MLIR, we just want it to be like pip install and then try out your model. And hey, there's an op that's not supported, variant that's not supported, file an issue, and it gets uh, you know fixed. And the next nightly picks it up. Uh, we do have uh, Mac OS M1 and, um, and Intel also supported. Um, if there's any, any variation that it doesn't work on, uh, I'd be very curious to hear. and, and very eager to fix right away. So please, uh, please let us know. Awesome. Yeah, so I think this is going to let people try it out really, really easily. And hopefully, we'll start getting some users or at least some new contributors. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, and one, um, one, uh, one minor uh, point to note here uh, for those who have been through Tachamala in the early days, having to um, coordinate the PyTorch version and and um, and TorchMLA version. That's something that customers have always been running into, and they'll be like, "Oh, I tried it, but it's not working." And they pip install something earlier, and it didn't work, etc. So that's all built in now. Um, so when you just run this command, you you get the exact version that you have to use, and and we've kind of like sorted out all the like uh, beginner errors that people have had been facing uh, and so we just want to streamline this even more and try to make it like you know bulletproof in terms of user experience mm -hmm. yeah yeah thanks Anish, for pushing us to to do this and doing a lot of the, the work yourself as well um yeah so the uh the uh, another big highlight here is we added a new api that makes it like super easy to actually use uh the torch MLIR before there was all this like weird annotator and other stuff, which was kind of um, essentially an implementation detail. And 
now we've sort of streamlined it and fallen in line with the some of the other APIs in the ecosystem where you provide a set of example inputs rather than sort of annotating things. So um, yeah, give it a shot and file bugs. If it doesn't work, there have been a few because it kind of interacts with the importer in a slightly different way um, because of the, um, well, because we used to always have these like wrapper modules. And so now that you're sort of just compiling the random module itself, it can expose some slightly different uh, issues. Um, yeah, and there's so there's three output types. There's torch, which is just the gives you the torch dialect in an, in the IR nicely cleaned up, shape inference, blah blah blah. And then you can either lower that to Tosa or to Linog on tensors. Um, uh, you can lower that to Tosa or Linog on tensors. Oh, hey Horace, nice to have you join us. Um, yeah, so um, a, th a thing that some folks downstream have been working on, which actually is me wearing uh, my other hat, and uh, is that I, I, I refactor the end to end test infra to make it really easy for downstream users to plug their backends in um, and just run all the, all the tests. Um, and so um, with my Erie hat on, I created the Erie Torch repo, and we started running a lot of the Torch MLIR E2E tests on on Erie, and so it's actually been quite nice. Caught some downstream regressions. It's, um, actually caught a bunch, revealed a bunch of bugs. So please um, feel free to integrate with that. Um, the the code in Erie Torch is like, I think it's like just like a hundred or two hundred lines of code. So it should be pretty easy to adapt to your um, to your backend, uh, whatever that means for you. Um, some new ops support. Uh, you do you want to do this slide? Yeah, sure. Uh, so thanks uh, for the great work from uh, Node AI folks. Uh, we added a few. Uh, new ops and some of them like uh, uh, for uh, con control flow operators and the max pool indexes backward and indexes are uh, not trivial are fairly complicated and we also improved two ops to support uh, like more uh, dimensions um yeah um, basically uh, add um uh, uh reduce some of the restrictions of those ops yeah. awesome thanks um and, and I yeah, think, uh, just to add to that Sean, there, there's some issues that we are uh i think there were filed upstream and uh, fixed upstream to uh maybe uh, in Python straight, so next time we can add those also. Uh, we're working with getting them upstream. Um, I, I think it was, uh, I forget what the, uh, there were a couple issues that were fixed upstream too. And I think now they're, they're rolled down uh, into the into the decompositions. Okay, cool. That's great. Yeah, I mean, anything that makes our life sort of easier and just work is very welcome. Um, yeah, so the folks at Nod, I, I don't know, Anush, do you want to introduce this one also? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, I think uh, our focus now is to go through Torch Vision. And um, Jose here has helped uh, generate the, uh, I think about 25 of them were lowered. So we are tracking all of them to make sure they can lower down um, successfully. Uh, and and we'll also make sure they're performant so that the decompositions are um, good performant on CPU and GPU. Uh, we'll continue to validate that downstream on on EV and Shark. Uh, but uh, but the goal is we want to try and um, add all the TorchBench models as um, as tests into TorchMLIR. Uh, this way we know exactly what what's failing. Uh, and what are the ops that we have to um, support? And and we have a, a spreadsheet that's tracking all of this. 
um, down to like the prioritization of it. We'll just add, add it in the chat here uh, so you can take a look at, um, at what it is. Uh, but if there's anything else people um, would like to see or kind of representative models, please do bump it up in priority. Uh, our goal is to try and get as much as possible um, all the touch uh, all the touch models, uh, touch benchmark models down, uh, fully decomposed and running on CPU, GPU, metal, or bulk, and you know, uh, in 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 a push button form. Uh, but but we are all years on what you need also. So if you can uh, let us know, we'll prioritize accordingly. Um, we just want to make sure it's useful for everyone. Awesome, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited. We're gonna now once these are in the heavy depth test, then it'll be in our framework, and we can just run these and um, get the uh, burn down all the issues for us. Uh, I, I guess one thing I should mention, since you guys mentioned decompositions, um, the decomposition functors have kind of all been upstreamed into uh, PyTorch four now, mm -hmm. um, and we're probably going to continue development uh, there. So is that going to be happening inside of the JIT IR level? Uh, or so the decomposition is live in Python. We currently have some facilities to turn them into TorchScript. Um, I, I think there's a lot of open questions about how to actually apply the decompositions. Um, yeah, and it sounds like if we're going toward more of like a tracing-based thing, then that might make things also even easier, like in Torch Dynamo or whatnot. Uh, Siraj? Um, right. So my question was about, I think this is really good that we have so many new models to try out. And if we need the particular model, if there were significant degree of hand-holding required to sort of get it working, I mean, is the, the current process mostly automated? So you sort of pick a model from touch vision or someplace, and what, how much effort goes into actually making it work through the end-to-end -end thing besides the mechanical legalizations? Are there any other details that would block somebody trying to get a, an entirely new model through this? Um, yeah, so there's generally uh, maybe like three main classes of issues. So the first one is related to actually getting it into the JIT IR, which we are able to import. So that depends on the ability to either torch.jit.trace the model or torch.jit.script the model. So there's a variety of issues that can happen when doing that. Um, once we've done that, then there can be some issues in terms of importing, um, like crossing from the JIT IR into MLIR. Um, these sort of like are asymptotically going to zero, um, but there can still, because it's like a very mechanical process, um, but there can still sometimes be a rare issue there. Um, then once we're inside of Torch MLIR, like you were saying, there's a lot of the lowering that we're doing. Um, so there is the shape refinement, the converting the program to value semantics, all the clean and any like decompositions that we do inside of Torch MLIR. So those are um, those happen kind of before we reach our sort of backend contract. Um, then once we've done those and had to implement all of those, then we can, uh, then that forks off into either TOSA or the Linago on tensors backend. And then that's just the lowering, you know, the lowerings you were referring to. So there's a few things that have to happen before we get to that point. Thank you, Um, so one, uh, and if you want, like, um, uh, 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 kind of breakdown of what Sean just mentioned in the um, in what we're doing for Torch. If you look at the link that I posted, there's a there's a tab that's tracking all 25 models. The ones in red are tracing um, or JIT related issues that we are trying to work around with AOT Autograd or you know so it's at the first part of it. And then the yellow ones are like oh there's an op variation that we need to fix, uh, and the green ones lower and are fine. Uh, so this way you get an idea of like, uh, you know, is it higher up the stack? And, um, and, and, and there are some complications in, I think, um, Jose was able to lower BERT PyTorch and HF BERT 
But in our case, I think we found that there were some cases with BERT PyTorch where there's still, still some control flow and tracing doesn't work well. Um, so, that, so there's some nuances to the top level of the like entry point. Uh, but we're tracking those there too, and that we want to work with upstream to find what's the best way to lower into any form of like dot script, parentheses, whatever the supported way is. And then the yellow ones are like, yeah, it's our variation of the decompositions. And then we just add more tests for that and continue to do that. And then at the end of it, you'll have like full coverage of most used uh, ops in, in, in good form. I imagine these issues are potentially clustered by a kind of model. For example, you might see something that's more well, but a, a category of vision models and not so much with NLP or the other way around. We've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you look at the ops, um, uh, there's another tab which says, you know, for what particular model, um, what ops are required or what class. So if you look at the vision transformer, they're all kind of similar. And then there's the other bunch of like vision uh, stuff that are required. So we can sort it based on that. And, and we're just prioritizing based on what our customers are using, um, which is like, you know, predominantly we're coming from the uh, transformer side. Uh, we are doing the vision side, uh, vision transformer side and teach transformer and transformers, but, um, but the regular con based ones are also important. So if there's any, um, you know, prioritization for anyone else using anything, please let us know. I know last time we spoke, there was like interest for T5 uh, from the Cerebrus folks. We, we, we've been chipping away at that to see if we can get that also in, in good form, but you know, we'll, we'll see where it gets to after these. Thank you. Um, oh, Suraj? No, I just put the wrong button, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. The other hand. <laughs> um, another uh, sort of big news here is that um, Ahmed uh, added the Basil build. Uh, so the support story is the same as the LLVM Bazel build, which means it sort of can break at any time and it's up to people interested in Bazel to, um, you know, keep that green. Um, but it should be functional enough and, you know, this has proven to be pretty useful in the LLVM context. And so um, I'm excited that, you know, people who use that build system are able to, to use it and interact with us. And that's the that's the end of the the quick updates. Um, do uh, do we want to have any kind of follow on discussions, or does anybody want to maybe introduce themselves if if they're um, they haven't introduced themselves before in this forum? I'd like to introduce a new member from our side on ARM to have Tatwa Chong joining our team to work on Touchamalaya, among other things within the Tesla ecosystem here. He has been part of involved in Android and open source elsewhere with an arm for a few years now. And he moved to our team starting just a few weeks ago. And this is his first community meeting. And I think he's on call. Yeah. Hey, uh, is, is, how do you prefer to be called? Yeah, Tai. Mm -hmm. Hi, top I, okay. Yeah, I'm new here. Uh, yeah, as uh, Suraj mentioned, uh, I will working on um, uh, TOSA related project. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi. Horace? Uh, yeah, I guess I should also introduce myself. Um, I've talked with some of the people here on Discord before. Uh, I work on PyTorch, um, and I I've mostly just been following Torch MLR out of personal interest. Um, and I've kind of uh, helped out uh, and talked a little bit about various integration things. Um, yeah, of course, you've been super, super helpful in like so many, so many things for our project. Thank you so much. Just want to uh, repeat that. Thank you, Jose. I think um, it's it really helps us, uh, you know, streamline and and get things aligned in a way that. Um, downstream partners don't have to continue to like you know try to figure out how to integrate in, or, um, and that really goes a long way to enable everyone for the downstream in the Tatsumalaya community. And that's the people here, but then there are at least like five six customers that are not on this call that are further downstream um, from us that are all 
uh, you know benefiting from the work that you're uh, helping us with. So so I just want to uh, say it's much appreciated in, uh, in in the effort that you put in. Yeah, and happy and uh, uh, by the way, just is it, uh, how do we pronounce your first name? Horse or horse or uh, Horace? Horace uh, Key. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Just wanted, okay. First. Cool. Um, thanks. Uh, Cormac, I don't think I, oh, there you go. Perfect timing. Yeah, hey. <laughs> yeah I was going to do intro. Yeah, myself and John, we are here from Intel side of things. We're getting started on MLI or internally. We have, I guess, kind of plan ML project run by Intel Labs now. That's, uh, that's looking at lowering. So yeah, we're just looking to see what else is available in the community and where we can plug in to start testing some of our uh, initially lower level work. So uh, Cormac, are you at all connected with uh, Leslie Fang? Uh, no. OK, oh. that was a, I, I saw another Intel. Um, I think it was just an issue filed or something uh, from a, a Leslie Fang. So. Yeah, you never know with these big corporations, like who who knows who knows. Yeah, let's live is in PyTorch team. Ah, okay, because their their GitHub was saying Leslie Fang dash Intel. That's right. Yeah, in Intel PyTorch team. <laughs> in oh oh okay. Uh, so I'm not aware of those uh, subtle distinctions uh, from the from the outside. So Jianhui, are you on that that team? Yeah, I was working uh, starting started from uh, PyTorch side, um, mm -hmm. like uh, being the PyTorch contact for Intel folks, and now I'm uh, also working on MIR code gen for Intel CPU and GPU. Ah, okay. Cor Cormac, nice meeting you again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Huh, I, I'm sorry, I'm taking some notes down because it seems our community is growing quite a bit here. It makes me happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, thank you folks for introducing yourself. And yeah, as always, please uh, feel free to reach out, file issues, ask questions in Discord, uh, ask questions on Discourse um, for whatever you need. We definitely want to enable your your success. So let us know any blockers you run into. Yeah, anything, especially on the packaging and, and install, uh, we just wanted to be like, if you have any any engineer, you point them to like, hey, try out Torch MLR. We want it to be like two lines of code or pip install this and, and ResNet runs or you know something like that. That's what we're aiming for. Uh, and, and the same thing for developer APIs. Uh, we're, we're trying to streamline it. So if there's a variant of an op that's not supported, it, it goes straight to like, hey, this op variant is not supported. File an issue here and, and we'll try to you know, like um, hamster wheel behind the scenes to get something unlocked. So, um, you know, so that we can unlock a lot more and, and get scale for testing these uh, things. So over the next few weeks, months, um, we we really solidify like uh, the flow down through Torch Yeah, Yeah, Cool. Um, Paul, have you introduced yourself here before? Maybe my memory is just bad. Um, I don't think I have, but I was trying to lie low. Uh, okay, no worries, no worries. <laughs> All right, um, if there are no other topics, we can uh, end early and get back 30 minutes. Um, yeah, just last, as a last call, does anybody have any questions or, or topics of discussion? I could probably just give you an update on what's going on now and if yeah, sure. uh, um, So we have actually a bunch of new updates and we are pretty much this close to getting Bert and Franz working with Chelsea back in nice. the path. And really, maybe we've been follow the wrong strategy in that we have a bunch of legalizations and by we I mean really I know who's been really robbing this hard and we have a bunch of these legalizations that are all sort of 
closely related to getting bird working and we have maybe one or two remaining issues that i think we've gotten close to getting it working now so maybe we should actually split those pieces out and get them out one by one and and not in a whole big bunch and sort of dump that on kathy or you to review that might actually be a problem so i'm going to try and do that but we haven't tried the, all the new models you mentioned on the call that might actually get us a lot of working networks right off the box out of the box we haven't tried that yet so but bird is what we have been focusing on we're almost there so that's really the big update besides sort of bringing Tetwire up to speed we also have potentially another hire coming in so we've been busy on that end as well as trying to focus on cpu gpu on the back end side nice so that's it. awesome thanks for that update yeah i think that'll be a huge milestone when bert runs on on, on tosa yep All right. Well, I guess I'll, I'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, quick reminder that on other Mondays, we have the developer hour, which is usually pretty unstructured. We've had all sorts of different types of discussions in, the, in that time, from sort of getting to know each other, um, kind of cross-company collaboration, uh, to, down to like, I'm having a problem with this specific bug. So basically anything, you know, Torch MYR related, feel free to drop in there and and we can have a, a pretty uh, whatever discussion is needed to, to make forward progress. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.